well-meaning, but uh, I wouldn't exactly say she's an innocent. M Mariette. Her name. Her name's Mariette. Yes. Redhead, about this tall. Mm, that's her. Mariette LeBeau. <laughs> you dated her? On and off. Uh, <laughs> then uh, on. Oh. Then I married her. <laughs> then I divorced her. I, he's invited both of us? Christ, why would Paul do that? Oh, to brighten up the party in lieu of noisemakers and paper hats. I can't believe I called your house and they said you were at La Cassette. <laughs> Christ, why would Paul do that? In I, lieu of noisemakers and paper hats. Oh, Jesus, you're here as well. Wow. Christ, who else is coming? Uh, my doctor, Omeditas, maybe my accountant? I don't think so. That would make seven. <laughs> Right. If this is a joke, I find it appalling. Did you know about this? If I did, do you think I'd come in black tie to see you wearing the jewelry I paid for? Oh, this is a nightmare of my life. <laughs> oh, tonight's maybe worse. Oh, um, back to the original plan. I get five and six. Oh. I am leaving before this turns into a farce. Oh, I think this already is a farce. I think we're aiming for a higher level of absurdity here. Okay, I'm going to call Paul Gerard and ask for an explanation. Mm, sorry, he's in Sardinia. Well, why didn't you tell me that? Because I didn't go to the phone with him. I didn't have a clue you'd be here. Well, you didn't have a clue during our marriage. Listen, if you two would rather be alone, I can go No, stay, Albert. You are the only gentleman in the room. What a disappointment you are, Mariette. <laughs> you met me eight minutes ago. That is not enough time to be disappointed. Well, I met you nine years ago. That's plenty of enough time for me. I'll be at the bar. Andre, care to join me? No, but I'll go anyway. <laughs> Then I'll be leaving as well. Please, Marriott, ask him to stay. I'll be waiting out in the hallway. No, I want him to stay here in this room. Um, Albert, Albert. <laughs> Yvonne uh, would like you to stay here and in this room. Why? I have no intention of saying a single word to that woman. Even if he won't speak to me, I have things to say to him. Albert. <laughs> Ivana, is, is, she's quite willing to do the talking. Well, if I choose not to listen, I won't. I'll take that chance. How conciliatory you are, Ivana. Well, and uh, how accessible you are, Albert. Yeah. I'm gonna leave. If you had sneezed, I would have gesundheited you. Still, it's over, Albert. I'm free. Oh, no. Woo! I can breathe again. You are not free. <laughs> I was just being polite. No, I'm free. Free, 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 free. <clears throat> I am free as a bird. Well, God bless you, Albert, my dear, sweet friend. I, I spoke not because I wanted to, but because I, I, I couldn't take the pressure anymore. Oh, was your anger that great? It was the only defense I had. Well, defense against what? Against admitting to myself that I still loved you. Still wanted you. If I remained silent, unapproachable, it, I would have built a wall so high it would keep me safe from you forever. Well, what's safer than two divorces, Albert? <laughs> I'm sorry I caused you so much pain. Not talking to you, it, it kept me from wanting you. Why do you still want me? I will always want you, but 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 now I I can survive without you. Yeah, I mean it's uh, safe for me to say your name now. Um, hello, Yvonne. Uh, what's new, Yvonne? How you been, Yvonne? So-so. <laughs> well, not much new. I saw a wonderful movie last week. Yeah, I know. I, I waited for you to come out so I could not say a word to you. <laughs> yes, I saw you. Please don't smile. I'm not laughing at you. I know. It's your smile. It, it weakens my resolve. Sorry. So are you seeing anyone? Well, special, I mean. Actually, uh, yes. I mean, very, very briefly. Uh, 
I'm not sure it's going to work out. Well, who is she? Mariette. <laughs> I loved you too much? I mean, how is that even possible? Well, because it was all about your feelings and your emotions and your need to tell me how wonderfully happy you were. Uh, gushing all that love and devotion for me with, God, I'm so lucky to have you. How did a man like me wind up with someone as great as you? Never once thinking I may be having a terrible day, but no, you're too busy phoning all over me to ask how I'm feeling. I'm not going to take a picture of what you just said, but I could do a quick oil painting about how neurotic and deranged you are. <laughs> I'm deranged? Was I the one following me all around the city, running into me face to face for the satisfaction of not saying a word to me? If I didn't seek you out, how would you know I wasn't speaking to you? I mean, I had to chase you all over the city just to let you know that I was ignoring you. Yes, to punish me for leaving you, but it was you. Remember? Who else should I divorce? The maid? She already quit. Oh, and she quit? Because she disliked you intensely. Oh, yes. I can feel it coming on again. I can hear every single word you're never going to say to me. <laughs> no, no. Chasing after you is too exhausting. No, I think instead I'm going to write to you. Blank page after blank page. And I'll answer you. I'll write blanker pages. <laughs> Silent words. I don't care anymore. Divorce me again. Get an invisible lawyer and sue me in a non existing court. I beat you at your own game, Albert. Go, leave. I'll even say goodbye for you. Fair, well, and good bye. This is the last time I shall be speaking to you, Albert. Oh, hello, Andre. I'm sorry. I really tried staying dead for you, but the spirit wasn't willing. Angry? Not even surprised. I saw your hand in this from the beginning. Can you ladies hear me all right, or do I need to speak louder? No, I can hear you fine. <laughs> Which is why we are leaving. Gabrielle, I just wanted to say, don't find anyone. And thank you for not saying it. I'm not saying what? No. no compliments, Andre, considering I had to push aside a heavy gravestone. Albert Bonet, am I right? Oh, what a pity, Albert. Marriott was hoping she could sit next to you. She said that? No, at least twice. Oh. I've got you and Marriott sitting right over here so you can avoid not talking to Yvonne. <laughs> and Claude, please stay. Sit to my right. I'm really anxious to get to know you better. Any uh, thoughts on that, Andre? <laughs> oh, do it. I think someone like you deserves someone like her. <laughs> ah! Act. Three, the mystery unravels. Oh, no, that unraveled two years ago, honey. So do we sit anywhere, or is it potluck? No, don't no sit yet. I'm still rearranging. Just move around and let me think this out. Move around? Please. La, 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 Notice how we've all lined up. For some reason, we're all facing each other's former spouse. Well, why do you think that is? You put magnets under the floor. You know, I guess I should be facing Yvonne twice. What do we do now, the divorced couple polka? No, it's women facing men against each other. It's been that way since Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve never got divorced. They were forced to move because of that apple trouble. Can I try something, sort of a game? If I'm not staying for dinner, why would I stay for a game? Because it's a dangerous game. Do you like danger, Claude? Andre, at least I get most of my alimony back. I wouldn't have picked anyone. If I had it to do over again, I'd become a monk. That's because they don't speak to anyone either. <laughs> well, I wouldn't pick Claude because nothing would change. Oh, and if I did pick Claude? 
I'd end up at a dinner party like this explaining why I wouldn't pick Claude. Do you know that primates are more successful at choosing their mates than we are? Huh? And rarely separate. That's because there's not as many lawyers in the jungle. But we did marry. We did make the choice. I'm just curious as to why we all went wrong. I don't know. But does anyone mind if I take my dinner home? I'll eat it later. Hey, great idea. Let's share a cab. Oh, it's locked, darling. From the outside. My orders once we were all here. Cost me a pretty penny, but I will have my dinner party. This one's locked as well. And for a penny, and for a pound. She must be nuts. Hello. Hello. This line is out. Oh. That was complimentary. They like me here. Wanted her to have poetry that could capture everything that I thought was exquisite about her. As I matured, I, I began to write new ones. See, this time, I found my voice. This time, I wrote with, with passion, with love and clarity. They came from the deepest part of my soul. And on the envelopes, I, I drew wonderful sketches of her face without a used car in sight. <laughs> when I finally had enough, I, I put them on her bedstand to read when she awoke. And did she? Oh, it made no difference. There was a, a letter to me on my bedstand from her, asking for a divorce. She never gave me a chance to explain why I burned my letters. But I guess it was all over the morning that she burned all my ties. <laughs> so that's the worst thing Yvonne ever did to me. Since then, I've moved on with my life. <laughs> Was that if she loved me 100%, and I loved her 140%, she could never catch up to me. I realize now that bringing someone a warm croissant and hot tea every single morning is more than loving. It's stifling. I mean, maybe she wanted eggs one morning, or <laughs> toast and jam, maybe nothing. I wouldn't let her have nothing. But she was too loving a wife to deny me my pleasure. And maybe that's why she left. And when she came back the second time, instead I brought her hot biscuits and cocoa <laughs> every single morning. So I think the best thing that she ever did for me to leave me the second time. Because it finally got through to me. Kenzie, did you like the play? Yeah. I know, I do too, actually.